thank you so much umang for taking this up no pleasure i don't think we could have had a better person to start this with because uh, when it comes to design i think uh, pioneer when it comes to uh, talking explaining art and everything from the, we've seen the hathi singh haveli i as a journalist i'm i've been a journalist for 20 years now and uh, one of the only people i would say who has been extremely articulate who has been so keen and quite an expert you know when it comes to anything to talk about art and fashion and lifestyle has been umang hathi hathi singh the first things i think we would like to start off by asking is that you know you have been so much into design and you've made waves not just across the country city country state all fine but everywhere across the world how has this drive come in you when did it all start well first of all let me just um, tell the students that you know to understand the ganga you have to know the gaumuk you know you cannot uh, look at the hugli and say this is hugli and and this is those also the ganga so everybody has many many names many dimensions many aspects you know one could be cascading and wow you know on the hills and one could be flowing very slow in the plains we are still one river so my journey i have not studied art or design professionally or even in an academy or even in a class um it you know something that came to me uh, by sheer interest and uh what should i say uh, imagination so an imagination cannot be taught technique can be taught imagination cannot be taught so when we talk of art or design it's a combination of both you need to know technique but if you know just technique then it becomes a craft is generic craft people have a lot of technique but is generic you know who embroidered your kurta you need give a name of a designer <coughs> he didn't embroider it he didn't even stitch it he didn't even probably touch the material he conceptualized it and then all the rest is done by crafts people so when we talk of art or design you must remember it is no longer technique it is conceptualization um if we look at the history of art then there was a time when we look at the early periods you know because and i start from the early period because my education was classical my family my parents we were all collectors of classical art i grew up with you know jain miniatures or ragamala paintings or you know persian carpets of ming vases which were all classical you know i mean i couldn't look at a picasso and admire it we need to how to how to even begin understanding it i mean Uh, or you go and see Jackson Pollock, or you know the contemporary art movement, and then you know this is the Gaumuk, you know, coming from a very classical background, uh, you know, shy, conservative, chubby boy living in Ahmedabad, going to Xavier's, and you know, being average of everything that average can be. But when you were in your teens, did you have did you have some idea of where you want to land up? That you want to design these exquisite dresses for the royals, for the, for anybody who is uh, up and about for it. You know, so I'll tell you. Now I uh, we lived in a joint family. You know, we had almost one hundred and sixty five people in the family, five generations. The entire Lalbai Hathi Singh Sarabhai clan, and Kasturi Lalbai was the head of the family. Every evening we'd all get together, and they're all in very very Gandhian. It's said uh, I had 52 first cousins first second third I mean, we are called cousins not first but cousins and we all used to play and I was one of the youngest I know and when you are one and somebody is three it's a huge age difference you know they'll beat you at anything naturally so I was beaten at every sport whatever we played I was beaten I would and I hate hate being I mean I'm not a bad loser but I hate being beaten <laughs> You know, I mean, it's just not my thing. So, what? No. So I would refuse to play this. I mean, you play cricket, you lose. 
You play badminton, you lose. You play, you know, table tennis, you lose. Whatever you play, you lose. You are the youngest. So you don't play. You know, rebellion, no play. But you have to do something. My grandmother was an artist. You know, uh, her paintings are in the National Museum. And I mean, this is, and my grandfather was a poet. The art in our family has always been there. Everybody was an uh, art or you know, patron of art. So I took to the brush instead of the bat. Never learned it professionally. So I would, I would, you know, she would, if she would be painted, I'd dabble with her brush and do something. My father's younger brother went to, went to school of architecture and he was only at Bath. So every in the house, you know, uh, there were always brushes or things lying around. So I would just do, doodle and dabble with that. Um, as we grew up, you know, it became a more of, a, you know, we had textile mills, we'd go you know, to textile designs, we'd be talking about, you know, uh, how, we, how, did, how did they would be in the mills? Uh, so fabric and uh, fabric designers and art was always around us. So you grew up observing that, watching that. Then comes the big, you land up in a tent. You know, and of course you are you have to study. I hated studying when was in sports. You know, anything that you are supposed to do, I hated doing. You ask push me to do it, I'll react violently. You know, by absolute stubborn ass, no way. So at that time my parents you know, suddenly said some textile they wanted to put up you know, chemical plants, you know, the family was putting up. So, so I was a guinea pig, the youngest, so the rest had gone to textile, you have to do chemistry. <coughs> I hate chemistry. No, no, we are putting up chemical plants. You do chemistry. I said, that's not fair. I mean, you know, I was not born to do benzene and, you know, all this. It's, I hate it. You push me into science, 12th standard, you know. <sighs> Calculus. I hated it. Because I was pushed into it even more. And at that, you know, that's the time when, you know, you turn 18 years, you're just becoming 17, 18 years. So my sister turned 18. And it was a, you know, uh, and she was the only girl between 14, 15 brothers, you know, in that, that slice of age, you know, a cousin. So she was thoroughly spoiled. She was the eldest. And she wanted to have a grand birthday, you know, coming of age birthday. And so and nobody could say no to her. You know, she was everybody, the grandfather's apple of her, his eye, everybody. So she had a huge party. I convinced her to have a party. She must have a party. You know? So it was an 18th birthday party. And the invitation card was the first job that Archer, Anidalia, ever got. Oh, is it? Yeah. So that's how Archer started. At and the start of his career? Yes. yes. His first thing to design was oh, my sister. And I had gone with the concept. Okay. So I'm sitting there. And Shamun and Bhumika's father, they were partners. Okay. So this is, so now you're talking about one fashion started, one art company started from that and origin. And the th theme was, she was turning 18 on the 18th of August. So it was 881, it was 81. And it was a rice paper, it was year of the dragon, so it was huge dragon sprint, we had 1881. Whichever way you look at it, it's a major celebration. Yeah. A minor to a major. So this was a cool concept. I went to NID, it was, you could get anything. We went to Singapore, we went to both. We were the first people to import the whole system and said, we need it. We the house. Spent the whole year. Decorating the house. I was at Crisco, we did thousands of square feet. And how old were you then? 17. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, I did not study. <laughs> <laughs> 12 standard. Okay. And she was in HL first year, I was in 12. You give your exams, everything, of course, it was on yours, everyone the same. Gave my exams, results come red, 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 all red. Except English. <laughs> <laughs> Mass, chemistry, physics, everything red. Fail, 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 fail. Thank God there was nothing online then. I <laughs> 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 people were just fail kids. <laughs> so, okay, you look at it, you know, October, December, whatever. Then, uh, since next year, now I'm turning 18, sibling rivalry. So, in 82, you know, so. If, and for her, you know, we had a huge show. I painted these dragons and we had paper mesh dragons and NID designs, you know, uh, fans inside, you know, table fans drawn up and up and up and confetti and imagination, just wild imagination. 
There was nothing available in the market. And you didn't have Google to turn to for ideas? Google, you didn't have cell phones. That's what, yeah. You didn't have Xerox machines. So it was all out of your Nothing. So it was all out of your imagination. And, you know, so. My, I have to double it, actually, it's my own birth name, <laughs> and it was in 82, and I am born on 19th of November, and our dear Mrs. Gandhi decides to have the Asian Games opening on 19th of November, and then, doing my birthday, <laughs> completely ruined my birthday, so we are all in Delhi, now we have got the opening ceremony, now, which is the next best day, New Year's Eve, so New Year's Eve. And I had given them 12 weeks in October. <laughs> Results come in December. <laughs> 29th of December, the results come. Fail. <laughs> and I had a thousand people join for dinner at Nazi two days later. People committed suicide at that time. You know, jumped off into Akira Lake or jumped off a bridge. You know, when they failed once. If you failed twice, I, I, there was no option left. You know, it's like die, you know, just, you don't even come home, you know. <laughs> so here I am, and I go, my father's reading his newspaper in the in his room, and I walk up and I said, I'm like crocodile tears, and I said, and I'm like, I'm cancelling my party. <laughs> so he said, Why? <laughs> I fail. <laughs> so he said, well, So? So? I fail! And so, you fail because you don't study, not because you're not intelligent. And you're having a party because it's your birthday. It's an independent thing. Have your party. You know, and just when I realize nobody is stupid, we all are going to fail in life at some point when we are not motivated. If you are not motivated, you will fail. It's not a failure of your character, it's not a failure of your ability. It's a failure of something you didn't want to pursue and take it as a signal. A signal that says, hey, stop doing this, do what you can excel in. And then you went to America. Just, no, I'm for your I do anything. No. I should tell you some passer. I haven't passed for 20 years. <laughs> I refuse to go to So we in America and my father. Yeah, I don't have a parent. No? Okay. This uh, is something I didn't know in these two decades that I've been in Colorado. You don't have a good job in the music twice every day. Huh? I did twice in the past episode. But it's okay. I went to America, America and my father saw it. Of India, I went to Parvana after that day. We got to the LA Olympics the day before. Do what you want. And I wanted to go to an art school. Every passes. So there I go. Now I have no much. Now I have no, no thirty to sort of argue with my father. You come and I come and you come and I come and you come and come and stick around. What wrong? I don't have a great name. I don't have a student visa. I don't even apply. Uh, I've never really studied the art professionally or even anything. So I go no. To fail no. I say a student blank. The 12th Senate failed boys in New York for the first time, and there you are going to Parsons. Parsons has rolling admissions. Right? First, I went to Princeton because they have to fail. I made a by two, and I got them, convinced them that my English was good enough to say, Give me a certificate of, yes, I can I have enough proficiency in English to join an American university. I went to Parsons, and coming from a Gandhian background, I can be stubborn, so I did my subtitle. I stood outside the dean's office with a lot of admission. But he was basically there to get us. He was so frustrated that he had to meet me. He had to meet me. You know, uh, nobody in America did that at the time, it was unheard of. So, what do you want? And he said, No, I want admission. So, on what? I mean, you have to fill the form. And give me a form and fill it. They weren't giving me a form. And they got a form and I got a, a jury gave me six things to do. A landscape. Uh, you know. So cubism drawing, the one still alive, you know, one collage, one was a self-portrait. 
everything else good, bad, or ugly, you can do the self portrait. I mean, it's, it's difficult. Even if you're a good artist, it's difficult. And I can't come up with cubism and say I'm Picasso. You know, this is me. It won't work. You know? So, but one thing I can do is doodle quite well, writing beauty. So, when I see some study in class, I'll be doodling in the book. So, you know, so that's what I knew. So, there I went. Sacrifice in the bathroom for days. I had given two weeks' time from the day. So, I had to do it. I had to do it. So, there I was. And uh, so, the thing that, that is, I do a uh, now, let me all the broad jewelry or my textile design. I do a big treasure chest. Let me buy this big treasure chest filled with jewels. And I like, beautiful hard on crowns and this and that. And that's it. The jewelry is okay, okay, okay. Like, no, they seem better. And uh, then you what's this? You just type the self portrait. So I said, that is how I see myself. Something precious and something beautiful. A psychological self portrait. You ask for self portrait. This is how I see myself. I got admission from Parsons. Because nobody in the history of Parsons had had the guts or the imagination to submit such a thing. With the confidence that this might be. So, it is not just technique. It is your imagination, your confidence, and your ability to execute it that you will get it. Of course, I, you know, went for no I was the first Indian undergraduate in Paris. And it's number one business school. It was also at that time. Because I didn't have a single set, no one would be friendly here. I had no choice but to study. And so I got straight A's. By third year, I was president of BAPS, and then fourth year, president of Harvard, MIT, Wales, in all the 18 colleges of Boston. I graduated to all college awards <coughs> for leadership and student contribution in any institution of Boston. So, yeah, that's how my journey started. Then I went to New York. Okay. And New York was a whole different experience. You know, going back to New York after living in Boston, and at that time, my whole family, you know, by that time, I was completely, you know, uh, preppy, yuppy kid, you know, like, big in Manhattan, totally, and all your, but you get them pissed because you are very proud Indian. And one thing I have a collection of costumes, you know, it was next time, you know, my, my, my ancestors had a wonderful boy in costumes. And we went to the president of Harvard and great friends. The Shah of Iran, son John F. Kennedy, they were going to the Temple. And in 1996, uh, in 97, they said, Rudy and Diana would be in Diana dying in a car accident. Oh, yes, that was 96, 97. 96, yes. <coughs> and so just before that, they had a party in New York. And to the world of Rubin, he said, it's one of the best stores of New York. And to the wind, the, you can tell the wind, just clothes and costumes. So of course we didn't go and see it. No, I was invited and my friend goes to see the Mother. So what's the reason invited me? Then I should have to dress up. The and the clothes of English royal to dress up in your Indian clothes. Fine. Nobody has to arm twist me for dressing up. So I wore a black thirty with a big beautiful gold monkey but I and I wore a Nawab of Avar's coronation coat toga and a big throwing cape and you know. I had a six pack ab at that time of 24. The no kurta, you know, large jewels and off I went. You know, the department had lots of shopping, and suddenly I have these two, four piercing eyes looking at me from back and back. But what are you doing? And look, it's a Richard Goldkar, but I don't know, and I shall be. And I just turned my and ran on the closest American the people I knew. I happened to be CC guest and Asked her and did and I'm giving this boy a hard time. And with them was Anna Winter, the director of American Global And she looks at me, Who are you? Who are you? And I 
and I said, I didn't know who she was. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I said, who are you? <laughs> I said, well, she, but I was smart, I didn't know who she was. And that started my interaction with Anna Wintour. And then from 1997, which, you know, from uh, Versace night, Gianni Versace was shot. Yes. And so the costume is born, which happens in New York, the biggest event. Uh, I got it again dressed in these fabulous robes, and again I met Anna Wintour, and she and, and, and Madonna was there, and John was there. They had a little the Versace outfit, it was marked. Um, and then she commissioned me to talk. Can you can you style? I said, yes, I can. I never styled before in my life. <laughs> I said, okay. I want to do a story of you and Tokyo. It's 99. Okay, it's three years. I mean, I did this story. It was one year preparation. I said, okay. Show me something that the world has not seen. I said, give me a budget the world has not seen. Yeah. What did I have to do? So I mean, nothing, you know, I didn't have a job, I didn't have anything to do. I said, I said, I want 27, this, I want that. I came back and Anna, I went on with 22 pages in American Road with me. And with five clothes, John Galliano, Rada, Chanel, Max Mara, Yamamoto, Tom Ford, you know, uh, even the world's top designers and me. 22 page shoot. It won the Story of the Year Award in New York for the movie. What is dramatic? What, what is the world not seen? So India invented polo. A general home of polo. But Argentina has the best polo team in the world. So what do you do? This was an outlet. So I created elephant polo. I created it in 99. And the first cup in his woke hand picture of me holding the, the cup, woke cup, and Maggie is in his elephants at the back of the thing. I'm shocked the world into imagination. My God, elephant in the world. Long sticks and elephants running and all this stuff. And uh, today's tourist attraction in seven countries. When you imagine it's a tourist attraction in seven countries. It's good. So, imagination will rule. Not, hey, not execution of technique. Then in '99, I, I came back and uh, I don't know where this thing, and I came back. And because when you're a designer of Super, because f 3 I was created, and I became the, uh, the architect for India's first fashion, that made a fashion again. And f 3 I was the patron, and uh, Nakri was a sponsor, and I was going to be together. Among the first ones? The first, very first, first one, yeah. the very first fashion we can get. And then brought fashion into the mainstream and people's homes in India. Simultaneously, what happens? In 2000, you create fashion. Now, I've come back after 22 years living abroad. 2001, January, earthquake strikes in Iran. And I was the youngest, the chief guest at IIM Kiosk the night before. And you go back home, and next morning there's an earthquake. I could not be me opening the half and talking about fashion from Ahmedabad. And there's so much calamity and destruction there. And I didn't even know. So I was so out of touch with reality that I took it to that is I'm not going to go back to America for, for the next 10 years and give my life to philanthropy. For the next 10 years, I need to have a technical design. I worked only in chat. And from an Armani dress boy, I became a Khadi dress boy again. You know, and once you come back and you work in philanthropy, and you see how much privilege you have done, then you realize the real art and real design is helping people bring their lives. And giving flight to students. Younger generation, uh, putting wind and wind under their wings, and that is also art. It's a three-dimensional art. It's an emotional art. It is uh, a psychological art. But it is also art because you, through your mind, are molding a young character. 
So I, I love coming to research, I love talking to students, I love interacting with people because the real design is you, the real art is you. So how do you feel and relate to the part of the younger generation, the younger designers, the younger artists? You know, I have learned one thing. I, I do not judge anybody or anything. There is nothing wrong, nothing bad, or nothing ugly, or nothing between me. Everything is beautiful because it, it, everything is made with sensitivity, everything is made with emotion, and we don't know what that person is thinking. Who are we to judge? I don't like to judge. I judge anybody. There's nothing. So I don't, if somebody asks, what do you think also? I think it's brilliant. No, so how do you relate to them? What do, what do you see in the group? Uh, you, things have changed in the last 10-15 years in terms of art design. In Ahmedabad itself, why talk about the world? Everywhere. We have things Art India changed. now, we have Fashion Week, we have several. Yes. And things have changed. Exposure is coming. Internet what is coming. What are your observations, uh, you know, especially around the new... I tell you. ...their experiences now? Unfortunately, what Google and the net has done is given visual accessibility to the world. No, I see people aping things which they have no coordination with them. So sorry, your kids are through your school. I mean, come on, can you do Namaste properly? Right. So it's like, so suddenly you're picking up things which have absolutely no correlation with your character, your style, or your gender, or you're sorry, you want to be a homeboy, but this is not the Bronx. You know, it's not. You know, so why are you trying to be in something which is not? And you know, so I find that today, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. It's a very dangerous thing. So we have people getting instantaneous capsules of knowledge, and they think they are empowered. They are not. They are not. We have a younger generation. I find. Which is living in a more of a psychological uh, so, so, colonization today than in our generation. Because every, they are mentally colonized. They are completely colonized. From their eating, dressing, thinking, music, behavior, is all aping what they don't know. You were doing charity and a lot of things around uh, children and things and then suddenly there was this you know the whole design aspect came and so where did it all begin again among is what we want to know. You know art, design, fashion. Uh, where did it all start for you? My, yeah. my ancestors, I tell you this, my great great grandfather started the first design firm of Asia in 1881. I think it was in earlier. In 1835, there was a great famine of Gujarat, where in the British time, and millions of people died. And at that time, six lakh people had moved to Amdavan as uh, for uh, you know uh, salvation because they were displaced. And Sheikh Hati Singh and the Koshi had looked after them. So a lakh of people they brought over from them and gave them education. So the education society was built, which is now Amdavan Education Society. A hospital was built, a civil hospital. The temples were built in the TC temple. Now, to give employment, they built public or public temples and people had to urbanize. So, artists and craftsmen, all of them got employment. And that became later the TC design company, which in 1881 collaborated with Louis Tiffany and started Tiffany and Co., which is America's best brand name to every day. And together they executed in the year of the White House and the Kensington Palace. At that time, and when the Grand Palais, uh, Grand Palais was built in Paris, night we built the Wonder World Expo. We won nine gold medals as the best design firm in the world. And in 2000, in the last two years, the White House again invited me and did the panel for Roosevelt House, Obama Commission, and I did a show in Buckingham Palace. So, and I love anything that's good. One can build a farmhouse or a Walt Disney castle anywhere at any time. But once you lose your heritage, you lost it. You can't build your home. You know. So I, uh, when my Hatisi Haveli is out one day in the big family, you know, organize something. You know, it was in shambles. It was broken, ruined, completely. But my great grandfather started the design company there 
and I want to restore it. So then it took me time to restore it, and I sung the sung design song. And so I'm the seventh generation, and this came to the same studios, the same place. This was which year? Uh, I started after, uh, I started in 2007. Yeah, about around that time. Yeah, around that time. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't exactly. First, I sang the center, and then I started the uh, main project. And then I took the Ahmedabad uh, AM, you know, world ranking project to Paris to UNESCO in 2010. So I did a show in Paris in 2010. So I took the road show of Ahmedabad to Paris in the exhibition of my costumes. Okay. And Ahmedabad was dedicated for the first time in Paris. Like three presidents of France. Uh, what do you think is exquisite and different about your design? I will tell you. You know what I think. I don't think I mean, every designer makes beautiful things. Mm. So I will not say mine are more beautiful. No, but how does it connect with the people at large? Yours. I will tell you. Uh, and what, uh, what I see, you know, my costumes are. I'm a perfectionist. I mean, even the smallest little thing will not work if it is not perfect. It could be the Gloria button, or it could be the lining, or it could be the fusing. If it's not perfect, it won't work. So I make very limited things. I don't make two of a kind. Every piece is one of. So it is not fashion, it is art. Every piece is one. And uh, because of the linear inherited what I was exposed to, I started making reviving costumes. I, I'm not studying fashion, so I, 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 I don't know anything about fashion, but I know about design, and I know about heritage. So I know what is the difference between a mobile Angarkha that uh, Akbar wore and an Angarkha that Rana Pratap wore. I can tell you that. I can tell you how many of blouse wall. Even I didn't know it. Even I could keep it like so I, this was my historical knowledge. So basically, it's also interest, Absolutely. Which, which I think is a very interesting message for all the youngsters that you know, when you're really interested in something, you observe, and when you observe, you are able to automatically yeah. gain more knowledge and expertise. In, uh, uh, and if you're not interested, you, you would fail because if, you know, if you're not interested, you won't want to do it. Yes. There's no reason to do it. And I'll tell you, the first one is if you want to be a rock star, go be a rock star, don't try and be a scientist. It's not going to work, and you'll be miserable. You'll be around you miserable, and you you know end up being a failure. But if you are want to be a rock star and you pursue being a rock star and pick up the guitar and start playing, you could be a strange rock star and have a happy life. Oh, very interesting to know from you actually. Some yeah. like to take the name of a few people you know who you dressed and people who have your uh, costumes uh, have from royal families to business uh, uh, magnates and all of. Them. Well, I will start with, okay, I will first one who put an American president in the bun. Bill Clinton wore my bun, the line also modeled for me. Uh, Prince Charles has also. Um, uh, the Queen of France, I mean, and the Tsar of Russia, I mean, inside, you know, with, uh, uh, and you know, from Europe, royals to, of course, what I don't live for, 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 what I Raj Mata, Jaipur, Diya Kumari, Maharani of Baroda, Maharani of Gwalior, uh, the Prince of Saudi Arabia, the King of Qatar, right. uh, the Queen of Bhutan. I have been close with 11 ruling families of the world. And, 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 and in 2014, my catalog had the stamp of Prince Charles and Queen Elizabeth. And my collection was ranked for English luxury. Above Ferragamo, Rolls Royce, and Mont Blanc. And the number one place which you, you've traveled around the world uh, besides India, you've been everywhere. Where do you think design is at its best form? There are, there are two extremes. Okay. And there is not one answer to that. Japan is one. Now I did the same things for Paris and they were so baroque, so baroque that I mean they were dazzling. So as per the sensibilities of yeah, each. but if you ask me which is uh, your personal, I, mean, I love them both. But you know, one is hand woven, hand stitched, forty meter gear angarkha of you no know, 
Baba Maharaj has seen there in pure white. And the other is, you know, of a Baroque period, you know, uh, you know, so grand, grand, like Maharaj of Dulip saying, you know, it is so fine and it is visual dagger. So both are wonderful. They both have a In India, who do you think has been, let's talk of Maharajas and a business uh, magnate of his wife, who do you think are, are your personal favorites? People who really uh, dress in, uh, dress well. You know, of, <coughs> there are many who dress well, but from the oh, senior generation, uh, Shiji, Maharaj, is the only one I know who can carry the Rajput Angal Khan in a way and style can put a black tie into the back burner. You know, I mean, beautiful. And, and, and then India has so many dresses. Of course. So as a designer, among you, which one, which ones, or rather, which one is the one that you think is very nice? I love nice. Angelka. I love Angelka. Angelka. And for the women, you will go Angelka too. Yeah, but you now, yes, they do. But no. Uh, I mean, sari, are you more for design sarees? I or love I, for see, a sari. The silks or the chiffons, the zardosis or the. You know, I, I, I personally, I love beeps. Okay. Uh, it is very unfair and I think it is absolutely horrible and I am I'm party to that because see, again you are making what the world likes. I don't know how to be not in, and, I, and our global designs have such a vast history and the Jamdanis and the Ashawalis and the, you know, uh, Baluchanis. <coughs> The weavers are coming to spend even the weaver works and makes it in jewels again with the saris. You know, 90,000 and the articles are Kimogi sari. I make an outfit with nothing on it and I sell it for one and a half lakhs and people buy it. And I'm like, is, is there something wrong in our uh, mind frame? I, I feel guilty sometimes. I say, like, like, you know. Buy that sari instead, like, you know, buy that sari. You know, like. If you, it was not you, if it wasn't you, what do you think is the reason that people pick it up? Is it because it is a one designing? Is it because it, we want to come running against Chanel? Okay. See, today people are not buying a, buying an outfit, they are buying a brand. Yes. You know, they are buying a brand and it's absurd. I, I, I know I am a design world and I'm, I know exactly what it takes and exactly what it costs. To make it, but it's like Parshma Kumbakona, it costs 3 cents to make it, why 100 pounds? The rest of it is all marketing money. Marketing, PR, party, or build up the hype and the brand, which the poor weaver cannot do and should not do. So, I mean, all the brands you are buying, you are paying for hype. I mean, a Dolce Gabbana bag or a Bottega Veneta, you know, or a Hermes Kelly. Five year waiting list? You could be dead! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, come on! I mean, come on! You know? And then also, you went for a, you know, for a crocodile with 100,000 pounds? I mean, absurd! Why don't we have a question? Why don't you begin with the. Because we've had some interesting discussions, you know, yeah. when it comes to. Art and uh, yeah, yeah, that's a feedback of you know. So you all, why don't yeah. we begin and why don't we ask? I mean, so many people wanting to ask questions to Umang. So so I, I love the fact that you actually have mentioned the uh, conceptualization being so important, and that's actually something that we try to uh, teach our students at the academy. You can't teach them. It's it's difficult, but I would like you to say something about how you can personally, at an individual level, build a process. For your conceptualization. I think you can't teach conceptualization, you cannot teach imagination. What you can teach is how not to fear your imagination. Because we, we do not execute our imagination because we fear it. We all can imagine and we all can conceptualize. That is not in your hand or my hand to what it other to think or imagine. Even right now, all of us have different and weird thoughts going on in our brain. They all think the same, but they are all different. We have no control and influence in that. What, but we are all well behaved is like, it's when you say, my God, I want to run out of a meeting. No, it's when you stop talking, somebody's like, you kill him. No, <laughs> 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 anything. <laughs> but, you know, we all feel like, oh, oh, how nice, how nice, like, oh, I will kill him. <laughs> <laughs> so, imagination, <laughs> yeah, you cannot influence imagination. <laughs> so, uh, my thing is, there is a day you stop fearing your 
will enjoy by the day. You will create. Um, there is an overabundance of knowledge for the younger generation. Uh, this is called Google. Uh, there's, I mean, there's just too much out there. That's how I feel sometimes. Um, now, when you are saying, you know, your imagination is key to your success, no matter what you do, whether it's art or design or this medicine or whether it's architecture, yeah. whatever it is. Um, Even Google is somebody's imagination. True. So. But sometimes it becomes an impediment to one's imagination because it's so much easier to just go Google.com and search for something than actually sit there, breathe. Take your time and imagine something that some that you want to make. How how do you how do you bring that discipline with the younger generation? How do they do themselves saying almost saying, no, I'm not gonna open my laptop. I'm not gonna It's happen. impossible. It's impossible. Let's not fight what is not you know what uh, what cannot be a reality. Because others will be out of sync with their own peers. One. B the idea is not how, how, what I can do without it. Let's see, what can I do with it? What can I do with it? I mean, I'm having access to this. What can I do with it? How do I can, how, what can I reshape, how can I reshape things? So imagine, build on that. We all don't have to reinvent the side, reinvent the wheel. But I mean, take this technology and build something spectacular. Uh, I just got something about, you're talking about Google. You know Google, uh, Google secretary? This was launched yesterday in London. Yeah, for fantastic. Now that's imagination. Somebody imagined it. That is also art. It's also art. So I don't think today art is painting is not even considered art anymore. Painting is not considered art. It may go into fine art or something. Ideas. It's idea. You know. So if you go to TEDx, so the person who started TEDx, you know. He was giving a speech in New York for the New York Design Awards. And I was also one of them. And uh, he said the same thing, that, that art will no longer be, there will be technology where you can put your brain cells and what you imagine transforms into art on screen, on a digital screen. Because we are very, sometimes very afraid to even express but that can pick up your pulse and create, start creating art. So you start imagining things and it starts creating it. You know, that concept is also an imagination. That's not imagination, you're always exists. You can see Yeah. Besides, you always exist. You can see color. You can see color. You can see color. You can see color. So that is the next generation of art. That is the next generation of art. No. Uh, and then when you say, so fine art, which is this, is going to become, I won't say redundant, but it's going to be left behind the realm of hobbies. It's like reading a book on paper. And, and who's going to carry such fat books? You know, a, you, paper, then disposable, biodegradable, there's so many issues with it. Ink, e-books, you carry your little phone or your iPad anywhere, and you have we read whichever book you want whenever you want. Why why cut down trees and make paper books? So no. Just concepts will change. Concepts will change. Become slave of that. That unfortunately parents get it between your own. Yeah, it's like now some if somebody said when the car was invented, what will you no? Know, what is what is mechanized horses going to do? I mean, who will learn how to gallop and who will know how to be a great equestrian? You know, the, the king would say, my prince is going to become like a nallu. He doesn't even know how to ride a horse. <laughs> so, I mean, let's move on to the next level. Because we're not going to be able to stop progress. So we don't want our kids to regress. We want them to know and understand what they have inherited as a legacy. But you should equip them to, with the tools of tomorrow. Say, here, now what can you do with this? Take it to the next level. Now, that should be that challenge. Like, you know, take it to the next level. Show me what you can do with all of this. Also, in the life, if you look at the world, education has not become the slave of that. That is what. That's an unfortunate, unfortunate thing, life. what is happening that in technology. Is unfortunate. Thing. Slave it's, not, not, not even slave. Uh, we, are, we are becoming a very oh, selfish yes. name, individuals. You see, because up till now, uh, like this is the telephone, when you. You know, uh, say 50 years ago, even in Europe, 
uh, one house and one phone and the whole family used it and so like when a phone call came like you know uh, if, you know my mother is in london she would call the whole family would get together and everyone would you know talk and discuss what happened so a phone or a radio or a television used to bind the family so it was a collective thing today it is an iphone an ipad an i it is i it's not we it's not us everything is about i i am an individual and i am selfish is all about me The dialogue is always better than the monologue. I mean, uh, you can see a rose, but you can't experience its fragrance. You know, so you get limited knowledge by just visual. It gives you very limited knowledge, and yet we think we've absorbed it. So you know, it will show you pop art, but not what it means, what its relevance was, what its origin was, what its correlation is, and where in. The reference with it, no, it won't show you that. And without reference, everything is highly irrelevant because we don't know its reference. Allow our train our children to think. Most important is training our children to think. And if they learn how to think, they learn how to imagine. They would learn how to evaluate. They would learn how to be responsible. So it's really a change. It's really so we have to teach them to think. The power of thought. What is culture? Can anybody tell you what is culture? So. I mean, let's, let's, it's, a, it's a discussion. I mean, I mean, there's no answer, fixed answer to it. We are Indians, right? We are all Indians. And we take pride that we are the, one of the oldest cultures in the world. Why are we Indians? So, my birth. So, Indians were born 3,000 years ago. Indians were born 500 years ago. Indians were born 50 years ago. Indians were born now. Are all Indians? Are we all the same? No. So the only constant is change. The only constant is change. You know. So every generation will say, by God, you know, they have lost our culture. So the past is not Indians So we are not Indians anymore. We would have become aliens. You know, I mean, if the AC, not the electricity, the Mohan Jindal, or whatever, the Jupra band, that, 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 of a civilization's sensibilities, its thoughts, its fears, its aspirations, its ideas, its superstitions, all this together collective, and that keeps on changing with time and innovation. So we never lose our culture, it evolves. I think 
coming back in circles. Yeah. Like you said at the start, I think I remember this time when I was in college, like all those bell bottoms used to be there when Asha Bari was not wearing those movies. And then uh, suddenly I remember when I was in college, I thought to myself, and then I was vocal enough to even tell it to friends, I'm never going to wear this. Such a silly fashion. And you know those high pants. And yeah. All, it's all coming back. Coming what are palazzos? This is different. Yeah. Me, what are palazzos? Yeah. I'm absolutely inspired listening to your life story. <laughs> uh, the thing which I take back today is about how you keep thinking about the concepts and how to share this in your ideas. But in your life, I believe, and what I think is your opportunities which came by in your way, they really match the fearless ideas which you have. Which is many people in the payment did not have those opportunities. And the way you have excelled in your life, in your um, profession. I have put all my negatives in a positive light. Let me tell you, it's not easy when you're in a 10th to 11th standard and you fail. You know, it's not easy when you're 12th and you fail, and how your friends treat you, how your family treats you, what you go through. I make it a joke. I can laugh at myself. You know, because at the end result, I could come out a winner. But the process is a baptism by fire. The process is a baptism. doesn't matter who you And because of your failures, you got an opportunity. Not because of privilege. Because I failed, I was allowed to go to parcels. If I had passed, I would be in a chemical factory. So understand, it, they are not, not by privilege. It's by my failure I was led to an opportunity. So... Do not, do not, see the biggest ingredient for failure is fear. If you cannot respect yourself, you cannot live a happy life. You have to learn to respect yourself first. Self-respect. Respect is earned. Neither can you inherit it, buy it, share it, gift it, shower it. You have to earn it. And self-respect is the hardest thing to earn. So once we earn our self-respect, you will not fear your imagination. So, so I think overall it's, uh, it's really about being able to have the courage to, be, to pursue your own dream. I think that is what somewhere or the other thing yeah. for your thoughts. Just pursue them. Uh, without thinking of too many ifs and buts, I think somewhere you land up. And you know, let me tell you, we never had mentors and the society was not so progressive when we were young. There was very little tolerance to deviation. You know, today we have a high level of tolerance as media, there's understanding. You are allowed and parents and society accepts you doing different things. It's been very enlightening, actually very enlightening today to uh, uh, listen to you, Uma. I would love to have Shalu and Hasimu. No. <laughs> I'm happy that you have uh, uh, communicated this particular message which I've been harping on every time to be, you know, very imaginative. Thank you, Umar. Well, I wish you all have your wings and fly and achieve great life and great joy.